Hello everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. Sorry about the audio problems in the first two episodes. They're hopefully fixed now. Oh, I'm hitting all the wrong buttons here. F5. Shows what I get for playing in the dark. To start off today, I'm going to do a little bit of grass punching. And hopefully, as you can hear, I've got the audio levels better balanced out so I don't have to fight them quite as much. Yeah, the first two episodes, I had my mic volume and the game volume reversed. Silly problem, I know. As you might be able to see, living grass is a lot more bountiful than dead grass. It also comes with these flowers, which we can, we can smash into dye, but dye isn't all that useful. Mostly, I'm probably going to be composting all of them. What I'm hoping for, though, is some more floral fertilizer. I have 14 of it right now, which isn't all that much if we're going to be starting Batania. I believe that our first Batania quest that we're going to be gunning for, which will unlock quite a few others, is we just need to get two mystic white flowers. Now that isn't too hard, but what the floral fertilizer is going to give us is random. We could have a million of them and never get a single white flower. Now, we can eventually, through Agricraft, grow our own flowers. And it is actually possible, I think, to use shears to get the flowers themselves. Except we can't get shears until we get Batania going. So we're kind of at the mercy of the RNG here. Which is why I'm grinding up some more floral fertilizer. And let's go and empty, empty my inventory here. Yeah. I think that after I empty out all of these useless extra flowers, I will go and actually try our florals. So, all of these, all of that. And this is why I built more than one. There we go. Switch over to the floral fertilizer. Yes, you see, after all that work, I only got a couple more of them. It's a little bit frustrating. Oh dear, it's turning night. But hey, I have a bed. <laughs> Life's looking up already. But yeah, each each floral fertilizer we use is going to get us something like three, maybe four flowers. And they're all going to be of random colors. It won't be until much later that we can get flowers that we want. Ah, we have one white flower. That's luck. That's good luck. And I think I'm going to run down and go to bed real quick. It's so nice to have a bed and not be locked downstairs while the monsters go out to play. Although I'm probably not, not going to actually sleep every night. At least not until I get skeleton seeds. Because I have been farming a fair amount of bone meal from killing skeletons at night. Come on, we need just one more white flower. And we get one more white flower, what do you know? I was expecting to have to farm more of this stuff. One thing that you might notice is we keep on getting this reputation. Now if you haven't played very far in into Regrowth, you might think that the reputation is just something that you see on here as kind of a, a rough idea of how far you're going, but no, actually there are reputation locks. There are certain quests that you won't see appear until you get the reputation for them. It, it looks like we need this farming quest done in order to unlock the rest of Batania. Hmm. I could do it manually, but I think I'm actually going to not and wait on quests. So let's keep that bone meal on us. And I am going to get back to trying to maximize our baseline crops. 
Yeah, so that's where we are on Belladonna, at least. Our potatoes are potentially done. They have all the potential to give us a fully maxed out. Speak of the devil. Potatoes are done. And I believe that... Well, this is actually really good timing. Yeah. The mandrake seeds that we need for our quest are belladonna plus potato. What this means is... I'm just going to do it with one of these children here. We plant our potatoes right here. And I don't know why I opened up the chest. I have bone meal of plenty in my hand. Once this spreads out over here, we'll fully mature it. We'll fully mature the potatoes. And we're going to crossbreed our mandrake and potatoes. Interspecies action. I know, it's mm, risky business. And that will have a chance to give us belladonna. It will have a very strong chance to give us potatoes. And it will have a relatively small, but still non-zero chance to give us mandrake. 10, 9, 10. Hmm. You know what? It could probably give me a maximized seed, but... Eh. Screw it. Let's actually put that on the side there. And put it into the breeding pool. And that gives us a max. Excellent. And that can give us our sugar cane. This is another special case of crossbreeding, though. Because in order to grow sugar cane, we need to put sand down. Because sugar cane will only grow on sand. You can see that in this slot of any eye here. It requires sand as soil. And actually, let me knock down all the wheat. And I'll put all that away. Being very careful not to put my maximized seed in there. So what we do is... We plant our carrots. We plant our seeds. And we dig up the dirt. And put the sand there. And because, actually, nothing will grow there except for sugarcane, I can just leave these crop sticks here and just let it happen. I don't think I can accelerate this with bone meal. I just have to wait it out. And that is kind of the early game of regrowth. It's a waiting game. Well, what do you know? The Mandrakes won the race. That sugarcane still hasn't happened yet. Now... When you, get, when you get a crossbreed, it's usually right around the middle of the road if one of the parents is maximized. Yeah, I think the max it can be is triple five if both parents are triple ten. But the funny thing about crossbreeds is you can very, very quickly maximize these. If we breed it back with its own father, the potatoes, which are maximized then the child here should be very strong indeed. We can look at gains of three or four points in each category very, very easily. Huh? Here we are. We have sugarcane. And this one is, again, 554, because those carrots are not maxed. Now, so I'm going to get rid of the carrots. And we'll put the sugar cane right there. And this is another very easy one, because only sugar cane can grow here. There's no chance of the wheat growing there, so all we can get is more sugar cane. Usually when we have soil differences like this, we can get very, very fast crossbreeding. In the case of this one, we might get three or four instances of the potatoes cloning themselves onto this crop stick because they grow far faster than the mandrake will but eventually the mandrake by sheer chance will be the one to get in there and it'll breed with the potatoes and it'll grow very strong indeed and i'm actually holding on to the carrots because let me show you something 
I can make carrot juice out of the juicer, a bottle, and the carrot. This is about the same as apple juice, except I can grow it now. Ah, here we have it, a cute little babby mandrake whose father is also its grandfather. Hmm. Hillbilly plants, but surprisingly strong. 798 from a 455 parent. I think that technically, if you really go min-max, you can get these maxed out in just two generations. But yeah, that's our mandrake done and sorted. I believe that as soon as the sugarcane eventually grows, we'll have this quest done, and then we can probably go on to bigger and better things. At the very least, it'll give us our agricultural journal, and I can get around to just cloning up all these plants again real quick. Let's get rid of this belladonna in the center here. And getting them all in the journal. So, I haven't really drawn attention to it. But I have a quest to kill an Enderman. And I just happened to notice one standing out right nearby. Now the trick to killing Endermen early on is just to tickle their toes and gradually back up. And try not to get hit. You can build yourself a great big alcove, but I find it's not really necessary. Because they are actually, I think, a little bit slower than you. And so long as you're attacking in the right area, they'll bounce back and you can keep them at bay. And you, as you saw, you can still take a hit from them, even without any armor. So usually I find that you can just take Enderman down, even early game. So long as you deal with everything else first, it's not a battle that you want other things getting involved in. So, with that quest complete, we get an Ender Pearl as a reward. And I'm not sure which quest it unlocks. It unlocks the end of the line, which is go and kill the Ender Dragon, I guess. But I'm not sure if it unlocks anything else. I don't see anything else. This Ender Pearl, I'm probably going to try my damnedest to keep because I'm going to need, I think, two Ender Pearls and two Mana Pearls, yes. So a total of four Ender Pearls. To make ender seeds, so then I never have to worry about ender pearls ever again. Now, from killing an ender mini, I've already got an ender pearl and some ender shards, which I or, or fragments, excuse me, which I believe also drop from concussion creepers. So I have call it two and three fifths of an ender pearl in hand. I don't need that much more to get the ender seeds. Once I have all the materials together, it's just a matter of getting the Essence and getting the Runic Altar up and going, because in this pack, Essence Seeds are made on the Runic Altar. Which means getting Batania going, which I can technically do, but I want to wait for the quests. So I need to talk to you yet again when this sugarcane finally gets off of its lazy ass. Ah, finally the war is over. So, this sugar cane is going to make a jump from 554 to 997, which I think is the same jump that these men drew. No, it's a bigger jump. Yeah, that tells you how quick this goes when you have everything in baseline and you just do the progression. That is kind of why I spent all that time getting all these baseline crops done, because they will make everything in the future very quick and easy. Now, like I said, those potatoes, they just clone themselves, so I get lots of triple-ten potato seeds out of trying to crossbreed. 
That's also how you can clone any other seed really easily. Like if I just want another, if I want another maxed out wheat seed, I just leave that crop stick there. Eventually it spreads into it and I get a clone of this. Later on, again, I can get clippers and clippers make that very, very, very fast. You can pretty much just replicate seeds forever for free. So, we have sugarcane, and we have two quests done now. We finally have that done, and we get our agricultural journal, which we can put in here. And I think I'll just get rid of that. And as we go along, I'll just be scanning seeds, and they should show up in the journal once they're scanned. Right now, the journal is empty. It's not really useful, but it's kind of a nice thing to fill out. It's kind of the Pokedex of the game. It's a good achievement. All right. So, our next goal is to either make mute. Tandis, or to make a Lexica Batania. Lexica Batania, I believe, is actually very easy. Yeah, it's just a sheet of paper and any mystic flower. Well, I'm just going to do that real quick. I only have two sugarcane and I need at least three to make paper, but that's an easy enough fix. Can I do that? Yeah, I can. Right, and I have the mystic flowers stored upstairs. Is it nighttime? No, it is not. Yet something is walking. Hmm. What do I have a lot of? Purple. Lexica Batania get. And actually, I believe there's another thing that'll help me out in the future with that. Is it in what the world teaches? Yes. Now it starts out making an oak bookcase. Which I believe I can do out of dead wood, actually. Because dead wood will transform into oak when you slab it. Yeah, watch this. You make six slabs, and then you make three oak wood. So, what is the recipe for a bookshelf? Oh, it's bookcase, isn't it? Yes. It's da da da. Okay. That's serendipitous enough. I already had three slabs just sitting around waiting. And I will probably never use that because there is a much better thing in this pack. The book binder. From Enchiladion. Two string and what a coincidence, I have two paper. And I believe I can just do that in here. The book binder is like a mobile bookcase. Except it fits in your inventory, and you can just open it and read any book you like in there. And I mean really any book. Enchiridion does a really good job of linking together books. So I can just keep all of my books in my inventory, even the ones that I normally just throw out, like... I believe I got a materials in you, and that's it. Yeah, I can just keep everything. I can't keep that in there. Well, nice to prove me wrong. Saucy little. Mm. And next up, I could start to make the atlas, but I don't feel like it right now. Let's just put all of this away. So 
So next up, I believe I need to make some mutandus. We have mandrake. We can get wood ash just from chopping dead trees. Green dye. Hmm. We could crush up green flowers, green mystical flowers, but that would require grinding a lot of floral fertilizer. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and grow some cactus. I already have the sugar cane, and it'll be soon maxed out. Next up, I need poppy seeds. For that, I need pumpkin seeds, and that is just carrots and potatoes. So you see how this goes. We get very quickly into the agricraft rabbit hole. That should be another triple ten potato. I'll just hold on to that. And I think if I really wanted to, oh yeah, I was demonstrating that this is just a, another cloned triple ten. It doesn't need to attempt to breed, it can just clone. Yes, this gives us a triple five because both parents are maxed out. Now, I believe that I'll just put the pumpkins right here. And I'll breed these up and try and get them maximized just for the sake of ease of use while I work my way up to poppies. All right, and that's kind of how this is going to go. We're just going to keep on upgrading our plants and upgrading our plants, and we get this much more compact interspecies action happening here so we can get very many different breeding pairs happening at the same time. When we get into doing things like the Batania mystical flower crops, this is going to help out a lot. We can pretty much fill out this entire field with lots of with lots of breeding happening all at the same time and it'll be very effective and we can get through this grind surprisingly quickly okay we have triple 10 belladonna seed get and i'm just going to see if there's anything i can do with them they can make that they can make that Oh yes, we, well we have mandrake is already breeding, and they can breed with mandrake to make water artichoke seed. Huh. So I'm going to see, yeah, these potatoes are being stubborn and territorial. You are strong potato, but you are too strong. You must give to countrymen, yes. I have no idea why that is the voice I used to talk to the potatoes. Because it is only voice potato except. Well, I'm just going to try and clone these mandrake seeds, or when it finally crossbreeds, I'll just use these. And then I will set up the belladonna here with a water pad, and I'll see if I can make some water artichoke. Not that I particularly need water artichoke right now, but it is a quest later on. And it is nice to kind of do these things as opportunities arise. There's our mandrake seeds. And there is our belladonna. And of course, because this is a different soil, being a water pad, only water artichokes will grow there. Later on, I'll replace these mandrakes for the water artichokes, and this will be another relatively quick breed. We also have our new sugarcane in here, so let's see what we get. Triple ten sugarcane! Okay. Now, can I use this for anything? Well, yes, I can eventually use it for cactus, but can I use it for anything right now? With pumpkin, I can use it for poppy. Hmm. Well, I don't have the pumpkins triple tend yet. But I could just 
maybe kind of, hmm. Yeah, if I put the sugar cane here and breed there. And I believe that, you know, that requires regular untilled garden soil. So this will be, oops, this will be another soil difference, which will make it even easier. And actually, let me start showing you. Uh, when you have compost, just combine it with dirt, you get garden soil. Tilled garden soil acts exactly the same as regular soil, except it doesn't need hydration, and I think it slightly accelerates crop growth. I, mean, I don't want that there, I want sand. I should bring a supply of sand into here, into this box, just so I have a variety of soils to use. I don't have much sand on hand, though. Hmm. Well, I guess I don't need too terribly many. Okay, plant... Uh, need more bone meal. Scintillating action. Misclicks everywhere. I know. Potatoes are still too strong. But yeah, when this turns into a poppy, I'll just move the poppy over here, continue breeding it with the triple ten sugarcane, and that should very quickly progress. Plus it won't have the potatoes to compete with, yes. Just an interesting little aside for all of you out there, I finally got the water artichoke seeds in from the crossbreeding here, and I thought I'd show you that water pads are actually a connecting texture. Right now we have a dry pad and a wet pad here. When I put the water in here, they connect. Neat. That's all. All right, we have our poppies in. I'm just going to start maximizing them. And again, for poppies, we need to have untilled garden soil, so we combine a little bit of compost with dirt. And we do not till it. And we just put those down. And those will crossbreed and very quickly grow. And actually, I, I think, isn't there another use? Yeah. If I put sand down there, then I would get cactus. But because this is on untilled garden soil, I'll only get poppies, so they'll grow very quickly. Actually, you know what? I think I'll put down sand there, and I'll try and get cactus really quickly. Now probably what's going to happen is the sugarcane is just going to clone itself over and over again, but eventually I should be able to get a cactus, and then I can just crossbreed it with the sugarcane, because that's one of its parents, and I can grow the cactus very quickly. Although that won't be as efficient, because it might have this potato situation. These potatoes, they, 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 just, they just keep on. Potatoes are love. Potatoes are life. Ugh. Also, I crossbred myself some barley. Barley is just sugarcane and wheat. And again, because there's a soil difference here, this will breed very, very easily. That's just another thing I put in there to have on the maxed out. You know, just, just another seed for the Pokedex. I don't think barley actually really has much use. Yeah, you can crush it into flour, which can make you a cake very slightly easier. It can be baked into bread. That's just about it. I don't think barley itself, it can make, it can make that, but I think wheat also does that. Yeah, it's just a wheat substitute. I think it grows slightly faster than wheat, and that's it. Not useful, but... Oh, hey. 
Finally, the potatoes have been conquered. Mm. Oh, well, what do you know? Now, I believe mandrakes have another use, don't they? Yeah, they can go with water artichoke to make snowbell. They can go with snowbell to make wolvesbane. Hmm. Maybe when this breeds, I'll move it down there. Okay. Yeah, you can see that very rapidly we're getting lots and lots of action in in very big, large, scary quotes. Lots of action happening. And this crossbreed is actually done, so let me remove it. And that's just how this is going to go. What do you know? First try, we get cactus. Huh. My luck is turning around. Now I can put this back on garden soil and try to maximize this. While over here, I will make yet another space of sugarcane. And I'll actually have to get more sand. Put the cacti right there. So pretty soon we're going to get our green dye, and that'll give us our mutandus. So, while derping around and waiting for plant incest to happen, I will look around the quest book and I saw that if I make a work table, I can get myself an actual live sapling. A work table is, thankfully, pretty easy. It's just a book, a crafting table, and a chest, or a better chest. I've gotten some books from a quest reward, and the rest of it I can just make. I've, my shift key, I think, is on the fritz. There we go. It's forestry work table. I don't think I've ever actually used this thing. I think it's just a crafting bench that can remember recipes for repeated crafting. Maybe not that useful just yet, but I might try it out in a little bit. In any case... I think I'm going to get some dirt and I'm going to plant these. And let's just check and see if anything has happened. Remember, kids, creepers are not your friend. If you see a creeper, kill a creeper. It's not racist, it's just survival. Let's... Yes, I'm jerking my brains as I find them. It's very sexy. Okay, and... Cactus, which means when I break that fully grown cactus that's on there, I should get some cactus green. Yes, I get exactly two cactus green, which is exactly how much I need. Now, if I remember correctly, I need cactus green, I need four pieces of wood ash, I need two mandrake roots, and I need a piece of bone meal, which I am out of. So I have to go and punch a little bit of grass. Lovely. I knew I should have reserved at least one piece. And of course, now all that is going to drop is going to be floral fertilizer. Come on, bone meal isn't that rare. Cave. Maybe I can find a skeleton. That would be a faster way.
Nothing, not, not a single skeleton. <sighs> the good news is that not too long from now, there will be a quest that will actually reward me skeleton seeds, and with those I can grow bone meal. So pretty soon this will never be a problem ever again. But that's not very comforting right now, is it? Another cave. Eh, why not? Not a very large cave. That was far too close. Hey! I hear it! I hear my salvation! My shooty shooty salvation! Thank goodness. I just didn't see it. I just picked it up. <laughs> oh, I was so desperate for bones, I didn't even see them. Yeah, you heard me. I needed a good bone. What about it? It's that. And that is that. Obviously, we are going to pick more mutandus. And now it wants us to get up to four saplings. Now, if we weren't rewarded some saplings, and those will eventually grow, and they will obviously drop more than we need. So we've got this quest pretty much completed yet. It just doesn't know it yet. But the quote-unquote legit way to do it is to grow up some stuff, or just find some tall grass out there, and use the mutandus on it. Hey, first try. Golden rod. Lily pads are useful, I'll keep that. Of course I can make those from essence later. No, no, I don't have that one yet. No, no. Yeah, I think I get mushrooms as a quest reward. Oak sapling! Come on. Spanish moss! I can't actually harvest that without a pair of shears. But it is very, very useful, so I will just leave it there. And a jungle sapling. Dang. I got lucky on every sapling except for the witchery ones, which are pretty much... You can only get them through the mutandus, so... Well, birch is like the one I didn't get. Well, spruce. I got fir, not spruce. Spruce can be useful, I think. I think you need spruce leaves to make podzol. Okay. Now we finally... Finally... Have unlocked the actual Batania quest line, I think. That Petal Apothecary is the first step down the rabbit hole. Let's just put away all of our stuff. And we got our first companion title scroll. These are a cute little addition into Regrowth. If we go into this little book thing that's equipment, we have a lot of slots that we don't normally have, even beyond just the regular Tinker stuff. And this goes onto there. And when you have a companion title scroll, you get a cute little companion following you around. You know, it matches my coat. It's cute. All right. So I think that as the topper for this episode, I'm just going to grab some cobble slabs, some cobblestone, and I am going to make us a petal apothecary. 
brown I think I have the most of. I spent some more floral fertilizer. I should put a crafting bench upstairs. Upstairs, he says, about the surface world. I'm already thinking like a dwarf. Or like a Morlock. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to decorate those. I'll do that later. Okay, Petal Apothecary Git. Now I need to make pure daisies. Pure daisies are the easiest possible thing. I am going to need some seeds for them, though. Oh, I forgot to set up the crossbreeding again. And I think I can just use these slightly over-enthusiastic pumpkin seeds. And in fact, pumpkin seeds, I think, are one of the best ones you can use, because you can craft a pumpkin into four seeds. So if I just take two of these flowers... Two, three, four petals... And we have a pure daisy. <laughs> and then I need the living stuff. And that takes a moment. So I think this will be a good cutout point for this episode. Yeah, we made good progression, although most of it is off screen. We have the beginnings of Botania finally in place. Next episode, we'll be getting into that quest line, and we will finally be building some of the infrastructure that will get us into the end of the early game.